the platform that I got being in the NBA and being where I am right now is the reason that we have people listening to this conversation in Sacramento. The reason. We want justice! justice. Since Stefan Clark was shot eight times on March 18th in Sacramento, one of the city's most powerful institutions has emerged as a strong supporter of the demonstrators who've come out to protest, the Sacramento Kings. They established an education fund for Clark's children, partnered with local advocacy groups, and managed to resolve the costly business problem of protesters blocking access to the team's arena. Vice News sat down with one of the King's most outspoken players. Kids who lived near the neighborhood where Stefan Clark was shot and killed by police met face to face with members of the only pro team in town. If you can help me welcome some guests from the Sacramento Kings, Doug Christie, Vince Carter, and Garrett Temple. The kids didn't go easy on them. My first question is, why didn't you guys come out and join us in the protest to make an even bigger stand? The platform that I got being in the NBA and being where I am right now is the reason that we have people listening to this conversation in Sacramento. And I don't want to give up that platform if I can find a way to affect change by still having that platform. Garrett Temple is the team's most public voice when it comes to reforming the way Sacramento's black community is policed. Temple grew up in Baton Rouge. His father was the first black player on the LSU basketball team. Race relations in his hometown remain troubled. In 2016, police shot Alton Sterling 90 seconds after approaching him outside a convenience store. The officer who shot Sterling was fired last weekend, though the state declined to file charges against him. You see the Alton Sterling body cam footage, like, it seems so personal for whatever reason. That's, yeah, it was crazy, man. What was the first police shooting that you remember, like, actually feeling something about? I can tell you the first shooting uh, was the Trayvon Martin thing. And they, they had just announced it. I was on the East Coast. But people were walking around jolly. Like, it was, you know, just another day in America. And I was just seething. I was so mad. If someone is killed and they're unarmed and the body cam footage shows that they, that they weren't a threat to you, then you have to have, there has to be a consequence. And I, I want to say that I know, that I can only imagine being a police officer is probably the toughest job in America, especially right now. But with that being said, it's a job that people choose to do. Right now, the community's not messing with the police. They're going to have to do a lot to get the community to ever mess with them again. It's too many lives just being took for mistakes. Mistakes that they're, they're not supposed to make you guys are trained. You know what a, the difference between a cell phone and a gun, you could have tased them. You shooting a man because of some broken windows, then you don't even know if that's the right person. Walking off the court isn't gonna erase implicit bias. Kneeling isn't gonna erase implicit bias. Talking to the chief of police about how to get police in the community to build a relationship with people, that's what's going to erase those implicit biases. 